In this video, we're going to demonstrate how to do time series, the full movie, full video using uh, Excel. So after we, in the other video, we explain how to do moving average and exponential smoothing. So we're going to start working on Excel, on time series. So if we have the data as is seen here, and the data we have in our example, start from 95 all the way to 2004, is a UK passenger movement and by quarters as first, second, third, fourth quarter so we have the time series here or is it called the time series so we s first start by uh, drawing the data which I'm gonna do now we first start by drawing the data and I'm gonna do it from scratch so everyone uh, if you follow the steps step by step you should be able to do the same example and it's very easy and very straight <coughs> excuse me and very easy and very straightforward uh, so we have I'm gonna delete this so the data has been copied here which is a gas consumption as you could see here which is a gas consumption could be any data you have the first step is by drawing this data which I'm gonna just select it go to insert line chart Remove this chart here and then put upward and format access. So we have four, four, close and format access. We have sorry, display unit in one thousand and close. Okay, so. Z. I'm gonna do this as thousand close. So this is the first we could see that here, as we have we see in this example. So data we have is uh, seasonal. So you could by comparing the data, you just compare this value with this value, saying that movement of passenger in the airport so you always compare the summer with the last summer and the one before it the winter with the winter and the spring with the spring this example is very obvious we just have to compare those data together or this one here or those one here or those one here at the bottom so the first part i'm gonna go back to the gra uh, to the lesson to explain the lesson so we have uh, the time series model defined as D equal T plus S plus R. D refer to the data series. So D, D, D refer to the data series. D refer to the data series. And T is a trend plus C as a seasonal component. And R is a random variable is outside of our, our control. The random variable usually if uh, there is a strike, there is a flooding, anything outside of control unanticipated unaccounted for unexpected it will change the data we're working on so we start first by calculating the trend using moving average because it is a seasonal component and there are four parts so the trend is here is definitely is equal to average of the four values and we go all the way down so the last value here is d47 so those two are not correct so this is the first part and then we do average a second round of averages in order to get an accurate data so e6 e44 so those the values we have is D equal to the data T plus S plus R. And here we calculate the trend value. Okay, so we obtain the trend values. If I want to draw the trend here on the graph, so I'm gonna select data add trend and so I'm gonna 
select the data one I, I need and OK. So the red one uh, marker option build in. I'm gonna make it as small as possible. So we have no, this is not accurate. Control Z. Marker on build in. So this is the line of the trend, which is the red line. The next step to do, we obtain the trend as it's given here in the lesson. The next step is we're gonna work on d equal data series equal trend plus season component plus r. Okay, now you have all the details here and the season component or s plus r equal d minus t and this is what i'm gonna work on so we have here s plus r equal d minus t so this one is in red the value here d minus t is equal to this one minus the original data here okay so this is the seasonal component this is a seasonal component what's obvious here in the seasonal component what's obvious here in the seasonal component because the trend is the one the one here is the one is the red line so two values are above the line and two values below the line as we've seen here so one below above above below so we have every four values two values are positive and one value is negative so we have this is the seasonal seasonal components we have this is the first quarter second third and fourth quarter. So the value here, I'm gonna select it one by one, unfortunately. So the value here, one, so every five values. One, two, three, five, one, two, three, five. I'm gonna make it them as yellow. And one, one, one to three, one to three is yellow. So those values here, I'm gonna select them. and I copied them here and we have the one after it actually you could do this as a visual basic under Excel and it's like very straightforward and it's easier to apply so copy and paste and that one here and the value here one two three five six and eight nine and yellow will be like the fourth quarter I'm gonna get rid of those two values okay 
format cell it's taking a little bit of time just not responding I hope it won't crash oh. so the border so here we have average and the four averages and the sum m30 so the sum is equal to 200 I'm gonna show you in a second so s equal t minus t and we copy all the data here as we've seen before and we have the averages below of all the data so we're gonna sum them up which we already did and the value is equal to 200 so I'm gonna just go back one point I'm gonna return the value we've already scrapped and so the format cell and I'm gonna do it a little bit quicker so we have the average and summation this is 105 so we could see this is a deviation which is unaccounted for because the season component must be the average and the value it's always like whatever below the average or the trend is whatever above the trend if you sum them up they should come to zero for example if half of the month you're above you say you earn two thousand or you have two thousand dollars or there are two thousand customers who come and for the rest of the month there are one thousand so on average you have one thousand five hundred so always half of the month you're above the average and half at the rest of the month you're below the average if you sum them up you're always they always cancel each other out and you should come up with zero but here when we did sum them up the positive and negative we uh, got 105 as a error as a deviation so I'm gonna this value here so this one is gonna equal to this plus uh, this value p31 So this is gonna be minus p31 and this will be p31 so we're gonna do it gonna use a dollar sign oh, I'm gonna use a dollar sign just to to keep it where it is so now we have the correct seasonal adjusted value which is s plus r is a seasonal adjusted value for the first second third and fourth quarter okay this is a seasonal adjusted value for the trend here if we say add the trend and display equation on the chart so this is the equation for the trend so let's see how does it work uh, so I'm gonna now work on the red values starting here just to show how does it work to show everyone how does it work so so, so for season we have x equal to 4 so this one will be trend sorry this one will be 357 times 4 plus plus 83459 okay so this is the value obtained from here so this is the trend from the equation plus is equal this plus for the season component this one 
Okay. So this is the data we have. Five. Sorry. Um, so this is a seasonal component. One or three thousand. Uh, so we calculated the trend from the equation we have, which is this one, and I'm gonna recalculate this. So this is equal plus or minus the seasonal component red. So it's 110, and there is almost a 7,000 uh, point error is due to the trend sorry I'm just gonna gonna do so the value here based based Base is special as a value. So this one is a yellow and the red and the green and the white as it is. So those are the adjusted value. So the trend here and we have the value here. This should be compared with the data here. The 110 should be compared to this value. So let's work on the equation for the trend line if it is logarithmic or if it is a moving average. So if it is a power which is our polynomial okay which is like a huge equation if it is logarithmic or a linear equation. So in our case I guess we consider the linear equation which is this one here to get the, the trend. So in this case we have demonstrated how to do um, time series forecasting.